Bible says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for this day you have made. We're thankful we can come to the Lord's house. Lord, we are certainly grateful to be able to sing praise unto thee, worship thee, open the word of God and study about thee. Father, we are so thankful that you have touched some who have been sick, Brother Doug and Brother Jim and others back with us today. Lord, there's a long list of folks who are still sick. I pray you'd help them, you'd touch them, you'd certainly heal them, you'd bring them back to us soon. God, I pray for those that are providentially hindered that God you would help them. Lord, we stand in need of your touch, stand in need of your presence. You alone know the heart of every individual in here today. God, I pray, some have already prayed, as any amongst us lost without God, we might see him saved, burst into the family of God this very hour. God, I pray for the saints of God. Lord, I know the world, the flesh, and the devil throw so much turmoil and trouble our way. Saints of God get weary and well-doing. Saints of God get loaded down with cares. Saints of God get weary in the battle. God, I pray you'd undergird them, strengthen them. God, do something special for them today. Father, without you we can do nothing. We need you. We need your help. We need your touch. So use this unworthy vessel this morning. And God, send revival these days. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things in the way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the perspective of James White the Baptist. This could summarize most people's thinking today. The Bible says in verse 13, Go to now. Ye that say, today or tomorrow we'll go into such a city, continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. If you're honest today, you have plans already for tomorrow. Mm, can I say there's nothing wrong with making plans as long as you understand God willing, this is what we're going to do tomorrow. But unfortunately, most people don't look at it that way. You've made plans for this afternoon, for this evening, for tomorrow, for the next day. Uh, friend, uh, you don't even know if you've got ten minutes left. The perspective of this world is go, 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 go. Never thinking to stop and ponder about what a privilege it is to have right now. We see the perspective. I want you to notice the probing question. This is the question of the ages. Look at verse 14 again. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanisheth away. Job said in Job 14, Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. You know, every hour, 6,500 people in America go out into eternity. Hmm? While we have assembled here this morning, some nearly 7,000 people have went out into eternity. Hmm? I told you I had a funeral yesterday. That man was yet but 39 years of age. 
We went to a cemetery this morning. You'd find infants buried there. You'd find children buried there. You'd find teenagers buried there. Young adults buried there. You'd find folks in every generation of life buried there. Death is no respecter of persons, and death is on everyone's trail. But even if you're blessed to live a hundred years in this old world, that is just a fleeing moment compared to eternity. I, most of you know I do a lot of work for funerals and uh, spend a lot of time in funeral homes. Got some funny stories about behind the scenes in funeral homes. But can I say that all the funerals I've worked in the last uh, few years, there's one common theme. Sadness. Not so much the grief of the, end of, uh, the individual's family. I'm talking about sadness. And how few people come out and respect the life that was lived by the deceased. Matter of fact, I see a whole lot of fighting in families. But it amazes me that someone can live some 50, 60, 70, 80, and sometimes longer than that, years and just a handful of folks come out to pay their respects. It's sad. How little impact we make in other individuals' lives that they t take time to come and remember our passing. There is a probing question. What is your life? What impact are you having? And more importantly, what impact are you having for Christ? You see, a hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what we did for Jesus Christ. Really, what is your life? Your mere existence, what is it all about? What is your life involved in? It's a probing question. And the reason God pinned it down is for us to take some time and think about that. What am I really doing with the precious minutes that God has given me? We see the perspective. We see the probing question, but notice the proper outlook in verse 15. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. That's the proper attitude, the proper outlook. Lord willing, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Lord willing, I'm going to do that tomorrow and on down the road. It amazes me in my own life how little dependence we really have on Almighty God. How much do we depend on God to say, God, give me the strength and the wisdom to know how to conduct my tomorrows. We make plans and leave him out of the equation. And then when our life turns upside down, we wonder what went wrong. Notice the problem in these verses. Verse 16 says, But now you rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, for him, or therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. See, when we know what's right and we don't do it, we're guilty. We're sinful. When we boast on our plans and our rejoicing and we leave God out of the equation, it's a problem. It's sinful. With God's help, I'm just going to preach a few minutes on a little thought I got this week. And considering for what is your life, it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Every time I read that verse, I think of back in the day when they'd put on a, a teapot on the stove and you knew the water was hot when the, the steam would come out and begin to whistle and you could watch that steam. It would come out very strong but then it just vanisheth away. That's like our life. I want to preach with God's help on this little thought. I want to preach on the uncertainty of life. There's a lot of people that makes plans that never get to see those plans fulfilled. Mm. 
If anything, the last two years has taught us is that life is uncertain. Hmm? Well, you could be perfectly healthy and never get the dreadful virus, but your life has been impacted by it. Hmm? You've had to wear face diapers. Uh, uh, you've had to quarantine and not get to go places because they've been closed. And now you go to the grocery store and you can't even find stuff. Miss Nett went the other night looking for biscuits. It's an amazing thing. Biscuits must be worth about $6,500 a can because you can't find them. Supply and demand. Uh, listen, you can blame it on oil, oil, you know, those oil tankers out there in the ocean not bringing in stuff, but they, we don't get biscuits from China. Hmm? Uh, it's because factories aren't making biscuits no more. Hmm? They're slowing everything down. We talked to Brother Brian yesterday. It's about time some of us just go together and get a big old farm and start growing food and stuff because we, we ain't going to be buying it much anymore. Uh, somebody put up the fatted calf, huh? Uh, it's, all, it's all coming down to the Antichrist and controlling people. That's what it's all coming down to. are affecting your, your food, food supply. And Listen, uh, you, you want to affect people. Here's three ways that the government will take over everybody's lives. Number one, with a health crisis. Number two, with a food crisis. Number three, if they shut down the Internet, people will lose their minds. Everybody lives like this. They shut down the Internet, America will go crazy. Mm -mm. That's where we're headed. The uncertainty of life. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, the guy sitting in the White House don't know what tomorrow will bring. He don't even know where he's at. It's very uncertain times. The uncertainty of life. And so with life so uncertain, let me give you some things that you ought to incorporate in your life. I'm going to say, first of all, you ought to make up your mind that with life so uncertain, you're going to live for the Father. Just make up your mind you're going to live for God. Hmm? You'll never, ever be dissatisfied with living for God. You may face some things, and you may have to put up with some things, uh, and there may be some things said about you, but when you look toward heaven, you'll never, ever uh, be sad to the fact that you live for God. If you're here today and you're not saved, you ought to get saved. Friend, I'd like to tell you you got ten more years, uh, but I don't know if you got ten more years. Uh, I don't know if you got another year. Uh, I don't even know if you got another week. Uh, I do know the Lord's coming back, uh, and everything's been fulfilled for Him to come. Uh, he's just waiting for the last one to get in, and that might be you, friend. I'd get in today. Mm. Uh, but child of God, you ought to just make up your mind you're going to live for the Father. Just make up your mind you're going to choose to do right. It's always right to do right. Make up your mind you're going to read His Word. You're going to pray. You're going to walk right, talk right, do right. You're going to be good to other people. Make up your mind that above all things you're going to seek Jesus first every day of your life. In these uncertain times, we should live for the Father. Can I say secondly, you ought to love your family. Hmm. Boy, I see so many families all tore up in disarray and not talking to one another and not doing right. I see that the funeral homes, man, they come in, they're mad because uh, 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 so-and-so's getting this of mamas and so-and-so's getting that of mamas. Who cares? It's all junk anyway. Uh, uh, but people got the, uh, uh, their bowels in an uproar and they're all upset uh, uh, because something that was said years ago or because somebody didn't do this or something. Hey, you ought to make up your mind you're going to love your family. Uh, Hey, God's blessed you with family. Uh, family's a great treasure in this world. Uh, hey, uh, I got news for you. There are days you aren't very lovable. Uh, you ought to choose to love your family. Be good to your family. Spend time with your family. Uh, you ought to love your family. You ought to live for the Father. But you ought to love your family. You ought to love your church family. Uh, well, I thank God for our church family. I look forward to gathering with the church family. 
You know, outside these walls, there's a lot of folks who don't understand us and don't care about us and talk about us. It don't matter. We come together. We can worship Jesus. Uh, we can fellowship with one another. Uh, we can talk about the goodness of God. Uh, we can talk about world events. We can just be around one another. I enjoy being around God's family. Amen. Hadn't had a chance to see a lot of kids play. We've tried in the last week to start to go out and see kids play and be, be at some of their events. And we got to go see Lexi play yesterday. She's really improved. Uh, uh, and we got to watch her play but it was a blessing when I walked into that gym and I saw quite a few church family there hmm? you say what's, what's so big about that we got to fellowship and watch basketball that's a good deal uh, uh, you ought to listen to Dr. Phil commentate on basketball and refereeing he's funny man uh, made a bad call and he says I wonder if he's on the take funny I thank God for a church family you know there's a lot of churches they don't have the liberty to enjoy one another like we do a lot of them don't have the liberty to worship like we do a lot of churches there's friction a lot of churches they're interested in who gets a title and who gets to do this and who gets to do that I'm glad we just come in and see what Jesus is going to do it's a blessing I know the church right now is really going through it my heart aches for them and, then, and I got up this morning and I was thanking God that we was going to come to the house of God today and there wouldn't be any friction what a blessing huh? you got to love your family your physical family and your church family you got to live for the Father life's so uncertain you need to learn to forgive hmm and I say we're commanded to in the word of God to forgive one another because God for Christ's sake forgives, forgave us. But listen, if you don't learn to forgive, there's something that happens deep down inside of you called bitterness. And that bitterness in Hebrews 12 tells us there's a root of bitterness and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. If you know me, you know I hate yard work, but you know Miss Annette loves a pretty yard, so I do yard work. I don't like it, but I do it. Why do you do it? Because I love her. And she loves it, so I love her, and I do it. I do it to her specs, too. But I've learned one thing. You can knock the top off of a dandelion, but it's coming back. You got to get it all the way out of the root. Have you ever dug up a dandelion? It looks like a gopher's been in your yard by the time you get done. Them roots are deep. Bitterness works the same way. And you can keep trying to knock off the top of it, but unless you get that root extracted from you, uh, my dear friends, you're going to be a bitter person. Uh, you're going to be a sour person. Uh, you're going to be somebody that nobody wants to be around. Uh, and can I say the only one that can really extract that root is the real gardener and his name is Jesus and if you'll come and help, ask him to help you with that bitterness uh, he can do a work in your life he has grace for your bitterness uh, and you've got to learn to forgive folks uh, listen uh, everybody's been wronged everybody's had something done bad to them everybody's been told something uh, everybody's been misunderstood uh, uh, but listen uh, just because everybody else is that way don't mean you have to be that way. Uh, hey, learn to forgive folks in spite of folks. It'll bless your heart. I've heard people say, well, you don't have to forgive somebody unless they ask hogwash. Forgiveness is about your health, not theirs. Mm. Listen, some people will offend you and they didn't know they offended you. And they're never going to come and apologize because they didn't know they offended you. Just learn to forgive. It'll help you. It'll help you. I used to be kind of upset about some things that were said about me. Didn't realize how I allowed that to affect me. I was reading the Word of God one day, and God told me I was supposed to love my enemies and pray for them. I didn't like that portion of Scripture. 
I had to read it again, make sure God didn't make a mistake somewhere in there. I realized the one mistaken was me. So I reluctantly started praying for him. God kept bringing that verse back to my mind. Then I got to where I really started praying for him. So what happened? God removed the bitterness. God began to bless. I'm just trying to help you with something. You've got to learn to forgive. Hmm? Some people say and do things based on misinformation. If you listen to national news media, they will let you know everybody that is of pale color skin is a racist. That is misinformation. What I'm trying to say is somebody might have been told some misinformation on you and they might have said something about you. You better learn to forgive. By the way, when Jesus comes, he's going to straighten it all out anyway. Life's uncertain. It's too short to have an ulcer. Learn to forgive. Love your family. Live for the Father. With life so uncertain, you better learn this. You better laugh and have fun. Uh, a merry heart does good like a medicine. You better learn to laugh and have fun. Hey, enjoy the ride. Huh? You only got one life. Might as well enjoy it. Have fun. Laugh a little bit along the way. Learn to laugh at yourself. You do some goofy things. Just learn to laugh at it. Go on. Huh? Anybody ever know Evangelist Jim White? Five of us. Huh? Jim White. Look like Dom DeLuise. That's not a pretty person. Jim White, he was a walking Murphy's Law. If it could happen, it was going to happen to him. He wrote a book on ten reasons why he should join the French Foreign Legion. I got that book, and my book's tear-stained for me laughing and all the goofy things that happened to Jim White. It just happened to him. God used him in a great way in a, as a missionary in Alaska and then as an evangelist. But I heard Jim preach one time, and he said, you've got to learn to laugh at yourself. I'm thinking, I don't like people laughing about me, and I don't like laughing at myself. He told stories preaching revival up in Montana, and it was several hours to the airport. He got done preaching Friday night. He had to drive several hours to the airport. He got there late. When he got there, the little reception there at the counter in the airport said, Mr. White, there's been a mistake. He said, oh, of course there is, because everything happens to Jim White. And he said, we've overbooked the flight, so we're going to bump you to first class. He says, "Woo, Jim White likes first class. Jim White's big. There's big seats in first class. That's a good deal. So he gets on the plane, he's wore out, he's preached all week, he's exhausted, he's drove several hours, he's sitting there, and a little stewardess comes up and says, Sir, can I get you anything? He said, I'll be eternally in your debt if you will give me a cup of coffee, a large cup of coffee. He said, I don't know where she found it, but she brought me a big cup of coffee. He said, I'm sitting there, I'm drinking that coffee. And he said, and then I dozed off. He said, and when you doze off, your fingers lose their grip. He said, that large cup of coffee ended up in my lap. He said, I came to, and I thought we had crashed, and the plane's on fire, and I'm doused in gasoline, and I'm on fire. So I jumped up, I started screaming, and I look around, and nobody else realizes we've crashed. Uh, so I'm telling them, we got to get out, we got to get out. And the whole time I'm trying to get my pants off because they're doused in gasoline, and I'm on fire. Uh, and then he said, I look out the window, and I notice we hadn't even left the dock yet. He said, the stewardesses were running to my aid, and I just stopped and said, folks, I'm with the FAA. This has been a test to see if the stewardess would react right in, a, in an emergency, and I want to let you know they passed just fine. He said, I sat down. <laughs> see, sometimes you've got to learn to laugh at yourself, even when you do goofy, stupid things. 
But you need to learn to laugh. Uh, enjoy life. Mm. If you come to the foster ha- household, you're going, you, you might as well learn to laugh because you're going to get talked about. We, we still live back in the Archie Bunker days where we talk about one another, laugh at one another, make fun of one another and everything. You know, I was thinking today, no wonder this whole generation's messed up. You know, they were told a generation ago that we got to stop violence, so we got to take cartoons off. You can't watch, you know, Yosemite Sam. Can't watch Coyote and Roadrunner. There was a lot of life lessons you could learn from the Coyote and Roadrunner. Uh, can't watch any of those things, you know, and all that. Well, it's really stopped violence, hasn't it? Uh, these kids, they don't, they don't know nothing uh, but video games. Uh, there were some great lessons you could have learned from cartoons. Uh, Johnny Quest, you could have learned something from him. Mr. Magoo, you could learn something from him. Uh, don't go blind. Uh, uh, let's see. This whole generation, they have no idea about humor. They have, all the humor today is foul. They have no idea about sarcasm, about cutting up and everything. I mean, if you look at somebody and say, you know what, you got a big nose, well, then all of a sudden you're a bully. Well, the fact is, they got a big nose. The mirror should have told them this morning. Uh, but you better learn to laugh, because life's uncertain. Mm. It's too short to be bitter. I thought about this. Life's so uncertain, you've got to learn to look beyond your failures. So many people, all they do is live in their past failures. You think you can't do anything for God, and you think you're of no worth, and you think you're useless, and, and nothing good can ever come from your life because you blew it one time. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ. Listen, past failures are real. But so is the blood of Jesus Christ. And if it's under the blood, he's forgotten it. So why are you dwelling there? Learn to get beyond your past failures. Look to Christ rather than look behind yourself. You keep your eyes on Jesus, and you'll see a future rather than your failures. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Everybody in this building has failed the grace of God even today. Say, preacher, but they, they haven't done what I've done. How do you know? But again, if it's under the blood, God's forgiven it and forgotten. If it's not under the blood, get it under the blood. Come and ask Jesus to forgive you over it, and then go on. And tell others about the greatness of Jesus who forgave you of all your sins and trespasses. Look beyond your failures. And I thought about this lastly. With life so uncertain. We should long for forever. You ought to keep your eye on the eastern sky. Look for Jesus to come. You ought to long for those uh, streets of gold, and gates of pearl, and walls of jasper, and mansions on the hilltop, but more importantly, the beautiful throne in the celestial city where we'll all gather and rejoice over the Lamb that was slain for our sins. We'll worship Him forever and forever. You ought to long for that great reunion day. We'll be reunited with loved ones who's gone on before us. Be reunited with the apostles and the patriarchs of yesterday. And certainly be reconciled to the Father himself. What a day that's going to be. You ought to look for forever. You see, if you have that hope, that blessed hope, you'll be pure even as he is pure. First hmm? John 3 tells us that. So if you keep your eyes on forever instead of tomorrow, your tomorrows will end up a lot better forever because you had your eyes on forever. You got your eyes on forever. You'll have no problem telling somebody it's not saved. Do you know if you died? You'd spend eternity in heaven? If they say no, you say, well, let me tell you how you can get there. Hmm? 
because you got your eyes on forever instead of your eyes on tomorrow tomorrow may never come but forever is certain and you're going to spend forever in one of two places heaven or hell and that determination is not made after you die it's made right now with what you do with Jesus Christ let me ask you the same question that James asked what is your life in the scope of it really what is your life and is Jesus pleased with your life if he's not the altar's open why don't you come get it made right and then spend every day that he blesses you with living for him let's all stand brother Clint come get a song of invitation if you're here today not saved why don't you come we'll get somebody to take a bible show you how to be saved you can be saved today you can be ready for forever you're here today and you're saved. Don't let petty things keep you from enjoying your Christian life. Live your life for Jesus. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, life is uncertain, but we're glad you're faithful and true. We're thankful you're the rock of ages. We're thankful the things of God we can count on and bank our lives on because they're forever settled in heaven. So, Father, I pray you'd bless now your people. Lord, I pray you'd encourage them. Lord, there might be somebody here today got some bitterness in their heart. Lord, help them to come give that bitterness to you. Lord, there might be somebody here today struggling with something. Lord, give them victory over it. Might be some that, Lord, the devil keeps their past failures hanging over them. I pray you'd defeat the devil in their life today. And, God, you'd give them victory. God, there may be somebody here today lost. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would arrest their heart. God, I pray through conviction they'd come trust in Christ. God, whatever other needs may be out there, God, I pray folks would learn to live every day as unto Christ. And God, bring glory to your name. Bless now this invitation. Help us, Father. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.